This is part 11 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to recursively loop through all form controls in a form group, including nested form groups. Understanding this technique is extremely useful as it helps us perform many impressive things either on all the form controls or only a selected subset of form controls. For example, we can reset form controls enable or disable all form controls, adjust the form controls in a nested form group, set and clear validators, mark form controls as dirty, touched, untouched, pristine, etc. Move validation messages and the logic to show and hide them from the view template into the component class. We'll look at some of these in action in just a bit. But right now, here is what we want to do. Loop through every form control that we have in this employee form form group including the form controls in this nested skills form group and then if we fill out the form with sample data that looks like this we want to log the form control key and its associated value as you can see right here notice here we have every form control key and its respective value so in our create employee component class just after ng on init let's include a method I'm going to call it log key value pairs. This method is not going to return anything, so I'm going to set the return type to void. And to this method, we're going to pass the form group that we want to loop over. Let's call the parameter group, and obviously the type of this is going to be form group. Now, what we want to do is retrieve all the keys of all the form controls that we have in this employee form form group. For that, we are going to make use of object.keys method. We want to retrieve all the keys of all the form controls in this passed in form group. So let's use the group parameter. And we know a form group has got controls property which contains all the child form controls including nested form groups and we want to log this to the browser console. We want this to happen when we click this load data button. So within its event handler, let's delete what we already have and then invoke our log key value pairs method. And to this method, we have to pass a form group. Let's pass our employee form form group. Notice when we click this load data button, we have three keys logged, full name, email, and skills. We don't have the keys of the form controls that we have in this nested form group skills. For us to be able to do that, we'll have to recursively call this log key value pairs method. But before we do that, let's use for each loop and then loop over these three keys. So for each key that is coming into this method, we want to execute some code. So let's specify a function here. That function is going to receive a key and we know key is of type string. Using this passed in key, we are going to get a reference to its control. We have the form group and on that, let's use the get method. To the get method, we pass the key of the form control and this get method is going to return us a reference to its form control. Now the important point to keep in mind is within a given form group we can either have a form control or a nested form group. So we don't know what we are getting here for the specified key. It could be either a form control or a nested form group. But what we do know is both form control and form group classes inherit from the base abstract control class. So I'm going to create a constant here. Let's call it abstract control. So this abstract control can be a form control or a nested form group. If it's a nested form group, what do we want to do? We want to recursively call this log key value pairs, pass the nested form group to it, and then find all the form controls within that nested form group. So we need to check if the abstract control is an instance of form group.
So if the abstract control is an instance of form group, what do we want to do? We want to call this lock key value pairs recursively. And then to this method, we want to pass that nested form group. If the abstract control is not an instance of form group, then we know it's a form control. So in that case, we want to retrieve its key and value and log it to the console. So to the browser console, let's log the string key. And to that, let's append the key we have in the key variable. And to that, let's append this word value. And that is equal to the value that we have in our abstract control. Now let's quickly understand how this method actually works. When we are calling this method, we are passing it our root form group, employee form. The first thing that we are doing inside this method is retrieving all the keys within that root form group. In our case, in the root form group, we have three keys, full name, email, and skills. Once we have those keys, we are looping over each key and then getting a reference to its associated control by using that key. Once we have the control, we are checking if that control is an instance of form group. In the case of full name and email, it's going to return false. So it comes to the else block and logs the key and value to the browser console. In the case of skills, it's actually an instance of form group. So it will come inside the if block and recursively call log key value pairs and pass it that nested form group skills. And then it's going to do the same thing. So within the nested form group, it's going to get all the keys. And then it's going to loop over each key, get a reference to the associated control. And then it is checking, is it an instance of form group? In the case of nested form group, we have only form controls. So for all these three controls, this if block is going to return false. So it comes to the else block, logs the key, and value for all the form controls in that nested form group. Notice I have already filled the form with some sample data. At this point, when we click this load data button, we see every form control key and its associated value, including the form controls in our skills nested form group. Now, instead of logging the key and value of every form control to the browser console, let's actually disable all these form controls on the click of this load data button. For that, all we have to do is on this abstract control call the disable method. Notice now on the button click, all the form controls are disabled. Now, if you want to disable just the nested form group controls, you can do so by calling the disable method inside the if block. Notice now only the nested form group controls are disabled. Similarly, we can mark all the form controls or just a subset of form controls as touched, untouched, dirty, pristine, etc. Notice when I press dot on the abstract control instance, we see all the methods and properties that we can use. For fun, let's mark all the form controls as dirty. Notice at the moment, dirty property of our full name form control and form group is false. When we click this button, both of them change to true as expected. At the moment, all of our validation messages and the logic to show and hide them is in the view template. In our next video, we'll discuss moving all of this into our component class using this technique of recursively looping over all form controls. Here is the method which we just implemented. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.